Hey, Crawl Space listeners, thank you very much for listening. This presentation here is brought to you commercial free by our other podcast, Empty Frames. Subscribe now or else you aren't going to be able to listen to this full episode. Apple told us they put a block on it. So please enjoy part one of our live show with Lori Bruno. It's basically unedited. Follow us on Twitter at Crawl Space Pod. Thank you very much. Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for coming to the Rockwell for this very special show tonight. It's a presentation of Crawl Space live with very special guest, Lori Bruno. Renowned psychic, Lori Bruno. Yeah, give it up for Lori. Yeah. So who here has seen Lori Bruno in person, has gotten a reading from her? Several hands? A few hands? Okay. I'd, I'd say probably like uh, what are we a third of the audience, a maybe. Third? Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. Now, how many, how many amazing things has she told uh, the people who raised their hands? Has she blown your mind at least once during, those, during that uh, reading? Okay. Pretty much I'd say 100% of, of, the, hand. of the third of the audience that raised their hand. Okay. She is an amazing woman. And tonight, we, she pulled up and got the best parking space. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Who, who pulled into Davis Square tonight and was like, there's no parking? Like, there's no parking. Okay. Drove around for four, I drove around for 45 minutes and then came to the door of the Rockwell and it was locked because they don't open until five. So I had to call and have somebody come up. Lori Bruno pulls in as someone's leaving right in front of the door as Tim and I are standing outside the door. And we're like, oh, there's Lori. I guess well, you know, she's here. We'll let her in now. And that's just the way Lori Bruno she, and she had that's no worries about it. And she we said that that's kind of incredible. And she's like, no, it's not. No, it isn't. That's normal. <laughs> Any one of you here, if you want to use your cell phone, it's a little bit, uh, the, the um, reception down here is a little bit strange. It's a little, uh, you, you probably won't get a signal unless you're Lori Bruno. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Lori Bruno was told she could not get a, a signal, and then we saw her make a phone call to her daughter. A, a couple phone calls <laughs> on her flip phone, and she's like, no, I just get signals. She was like, no, I'll get it. Don't worry about <laughs> it. Yeah. Okay, so we have a couple of quick videos to play before we bring Lori out. These videos are from our uh, second session with Lori Bruno talking about the disappearance of Maura Murray. Now, how many of you, we this, uh, this wasn't a Maura Murray show, but how many of you know the case? Okay, that's m almost everybody. Okay, good. Good. Okay, that's good. Good Good start, yeah. <laughs> good start. Um, for <laughs> those it's only an hour and a half show. <laughs> <laughs> for those who don't know about the Maura Murray case, uh, she was a 21-year-old college student who disappeared in uh, Haverhill, New Hampshire on Route 112 on February 9th, 2004. So 14 years ago. And we went to Lori Bruno in 2013, and we spoke to her. We recorded that, and we put that audio on the podcast and it is currently still one of the more popular episodes that we ever did, one of the, the episodes that we get more comments about even still than anything else. So we went to see her two years ago in April of 2016, and so that's where this audio that we're, and video that we're going to play right now uh, comes from. And, and we keep saying, uh, and I don't know if, if anybody listens to the uh, – has listened to the podcast when we talk about this show and we talk about Lori and we talk about the, the psychic ability. Um, people listen to the first episode that we did or the episode that we released with Lori because either they either they're you know they don't believe or they really believe. And it's not so much do you believe in the in, in psychic abilities, it's just believing in this amazing human that Lori Bruno is and hearing what she has to say. And this has been a great opportunity for people who have questions, whether you are a believer or not, to ask Lori face to face what what you're you know what you're thinking and uh, and get some answers. Uh, and we don't know where their show is going to go, and it's not it's not scripted. Tim and I came up with yeah. a, as many <laughs> as many ideas that we can think of, questions that we're going to ask her, but we have no idea where this is going to go. So and Lori basically told us backstage to throw out your notes. Bas yeah, and she said, if, she if, said it doesn't, if it doesn't come from the heart, it'll fall apart. <laughs> and we were like, all right. 
right. Guess we're tossing the notebook out. <laughs> but we'll we'll get some questions in, and then there'll be some time for everybody to um, do a little Q and A with her as well yeah. towards the end. So we're going to ask Lori about her life, her abilities, and then we're going to talk about the Maura Murray case a little bit. We also want to mention Bruno Borges, and I'm only bringing this up in the intro because we are going to mention it at some point to Lori. And if you haven't heard of this guy from Brazil, uh, his name's Bruno Borges. He went missing in very suspicious circumstances. He basically built a statue in his bedroom um, of Giordano Bruno and then disappeared for like a year. And then he resurfaced last uh, summer. And when they searched his apartment or his bedroom, mm -hmm. uh, they ha he had all of these encryptions, all of this uh, like code written all over the place. He invented his own language. Invented his own language. To, so To write, I think, 13 books um, on like spirituality and things like that. So it's a very strange case, but uh, Lori has some connection to it through the Bruno name. So we want to talk to her about that. So, uh, okay, Dan, we can play those videos, and then we'll uh, bring Lori Bruno out. Whose house is that? Um, I think Claude Moulton was living there at the time. Now nobody's in there? Um, it just got sold to some locals from the area. I don't like this house. I gotta tell you this. Yeah. This bad house. Very bad. There's no basement on it? I don't think so. Just flat in the ground on a slab? Yeah, I think so. It's a bad house. I don't like it. You get more as energy there or other? You have to go up a long road to get to this house? Yeah, it's, it's a uh, half mile from the accident site, yeah. It's a half mile from the of the highway. Um, a little further from the highway, but from where she went missing, yeah, about a half mile. I don't like that house. Mm. Very spooky. I got a creepy feeling from it. Yeah. Moulton and his brother. Yeah, uh, his brother didn't live there, but uh, his brother uh, believed that he might have been up to no good. He is up to no good. Who lived in that house? Yeah. They never went through that house, did they? Checked it for any DNA or anything, huh? So Lori Bruno is talking about the A-frame house. Again, this, this interview happened in 2016. And so she mentions the, the police never went through the house. Did they, they find any DNA? We know because of the disappearance of Maura Murray television show that they did find DNA in the house, but after this interview. So we were kind of blown away when we looked back at this, uh, this chat uh, now, like a week or two ago. It's really tough to be a, a skeptic and I consider myself a skeptic. It's really tough to be a skeptic when you um, experience Lori Bruno like this because Tim and I watched this footage uh, recently just to um, get prepared for this. And there were, I mean, what, what, what we're gonna show you is just a fraction of the amount of times Lori said something and Tim and I looked at each other as we're, as we're viewing it again and said, wait, did, did we even know that before she said that that day, and we didn't. There were so many uh, instances that we didn't know. Really and tough to be a skeptic. Yeah, but now we know a lot of those things that we didn't know then that she said, and we're like, I don't know. And now we're I like, well, yeah. actually, yeah. So one of the reasons we wanted to bring her out and talk to her about more Murray again is because we feel like we're honing in on – we're getting a little closer, I would say. Um, and the other th crazy thing about that clip is she said Moulton and his brother. We never mentioned uh, Claude's brother. She just happened to know that M Moulton and his brother, his brother Larry is the one who went uh, to Fred Murray and gave uh, him a rusty knife that may or may not have been used uh, to hurt Maura Murray. Okay, so uh, let's play another clip now. She met somebody online, talked to them. <laughs> she was going to meet somebody up there. They were going to have a party. Do they have her computer or anything the of her? The police have her hard drive. And what do they find? They didn't say. They didn't oh, say. they got to let the family have this. Yeah. In there, there is something there. It's in the hard drive. I swear by God, it is. If we can work with that, mm -hmm. we'll find out. 
There was somebody else she met. I'm not kidding you, I feel yeah. it. I want to see the hard drive, and I want to see it slowly. I want to look at it because there's something there that's on that hard drive that that police, the police are missing. They're missing. They're missing it. It's there. Hmm. It is there. So the amazing thing about that clip is that Maura did meet someone uh, the, the night before she went missing, and so we found that out only after the TV show. We did not know that before, but here two years ago, Lori. T tells us that that was what happened. And what did she tell you last night when you just confirmed everything with her and she said uh, that she had been meditating? She said that she went into a deep meditative state and uh, has some interest, well, I, don't, I, I forget the adjective she used, but interesting things to say about Maura Mar. She went. She's gone deeper. I think she it sounded like she kind of uh, scared herself a little bit with uh, in her meditative state. Okay, and we have one more clip. This one's a little bit longer, but we mentioned some of the persons of interest's names. Here, let's see. I got a bunch of pictures of the accident site. What's this? What's this? That's Butch Atwood's house. He was the bus driver um, who saw her last, supposedly. This is an overhead. When he saw her last, where was she? Right in front of her car, right, right, uh, right about here. That house is right, is this. I want to go up there. Okay, I want to go up there. Yeah, yeah. I want to go up there. Uh, her family, if they call me, sit down with me. Tell them there's no money they get. They get and I, and I, I want to bring their daughter home. This here, this here is where? What's this thing? That's um, Rick Forcier's uh, house. That's um, this place right, uh, right here. I want to go to all these places. Yeah. Can I read some names to you? Yeah. Um, Rick Forcier, Butch Atwood, talk yeah, about yeah. those guys. Um, Strange person. Strange, yeah. Strange, shifty. Mm. His eyes are shifty. You know him? No, just heard some rumors about him. He's a shifty person. Who's the carpenter? I think that's Forcier. Who has a speech impediment? His speech is like slurred a little. I'm not sure. Uh, maybe Tim Carpenter? Talks with a little slur in his voice. He had a stroke recently. Yeah, yeah, okay. Is there like a roadhouse, a bar there, up from there where she was found? Where she was found. Hello? Hmm. Remember what I just said, where she was found. It's like a roadhouse. Brown color, a sort of red near the windows. She had the boyfriend, but she didn't, she left him. Mm, yeah. There was somebody else she met. I'm not kidding you, I feel yeah. it. Greg Floyd? He have a record? Yeah. Record? Yeah. Prison? Yeah, uh, I don't know about prison, but yeah. He's done a lot of Floyd. weird stuff. Yeah. Lives pretty close to there. I get a funny feeling from him. Like a queasy stomach. Great Floyd. Him, I got a shaky feeling from. Mm. Scary little shaky feeling. Yeah. Did you know this about him? Yeah, he's definitely a dangerous guy, yeah. Weapons. Basement. Yeah. I just got the chills on my back with this one. The others, no, I don't have that. This guy? He's been in trouble since he's a kid, a young teenager. I got a shaky feeling with that man. Claude Moulton? He's somewhat a little worrisome. He's worrisome, that man. Greg, him, they're worrisome. The other ones, they had their little quirks, but not like these two. 
He was going to church this I don't know. <laughs> I keep seeing him going to church or something. He was in trouble, though. Did you know this? He was in trouble? At one point. Yeah. Like he wants to make amends for the things he's done. Did you know that about him? No. But he was in trouble. Those three. Strange group. They were friends, these three last ones? Uh, I don't think so. They don't know each other, okay. They probably know of each of other. Of each other, yeah. but... Who fixes the trucks and cars? The one that walks around nervous, like, nervous. Who's this guy? Nervous. Not sure. Very nervous energy. That one day I, I see somebody getting very nervous. And she really nailed to since uh, he got in trouble and was arrested by and since then he's become a born again, a born again and he actually lives on Bradley Hill Road near um, like a Baptist church so he's he's what she said in 2015 we had no clue of we had no idea of, so that's why it's so hard to be skeptical when you're when you're in her presence <laughs> okay so speaking of inner presence let's yeah. bring out High Priestess, Psychic, and Witch, Lori Bruno. Thank you all tonight, I hope well. Maybe we'll have a peaceful world one of these days. That's the big thing that we need. That'd Happiness nice. and peacefulness. And I think what's happening now is uh, when our children are marching, oh, what a great day this is going to be. And the children shall lead them. And maybe the greed marshals will believe and understand that it's time that they have a heart for humanity. That America is not a business, it's a democracy. Maybe the children are gonna wake them up. Do you think so? I think so. I wish I could go marching as soon as this leg is better, I can. And don't you think I will? I will. <laughs> well, then that, that, that crosses my first question off, which is, are we going to be okay? We are going to be okay because we have to back the kids. Completely back them up every day of your life. And believe me, it will happen. Remember, if enough voices are heard, something can be done as rising moon and setting sun. Trust me, it'll be done. They cannot stop truth. There was one thing I believe the Buddhists say, the sun, the moon are forever there, and truth. That is what can never be stopped. And it will happen. It'll happen. Just keep persevering. If you keep knocking at a door, it has to open. They think that, oh, well, it's only a fad. The kids will just, you know, uh-uh. No, it's not a fad. It's going to make things happen. And I've lived 78 years now, and I'm going to say it will happen. I've seen Martin Luther King walk across a bridge. I've seen man walking on the face of the moon. I was there at NASA when it happened. I worked there. Yeah, I wanted to ask about that. Well, it, uh, I just looked down at my notes, and my, my question was, what are your memories of 1963 with JFK, 1968 with Martin Luther King and RFK? Oh. I <laughs> literally just circled it like I was going to ask you. I lived in Huntsville, <laughs> Alabama. In 1960, I went to work for Marshall Space Flight Center there as a technical illustrator under Dr. Werner von Braun. You know who Werner von Braun was? He was the man that aimed the V-2 rockets from Pinamunde to England. And then he saw the light and went with the Americans and said, I'm not staying here with Adolf. The V-2 rocket became the forerunner of the Jupiter missile, which became the forerunner of the Saturn 1B, which carried man to the face of Luna. Do I remember them? Yes. Chris. Grissom, White, and Chafee, I remember, was there when that they died on that launch pad in the vehicle assembly building. It was right where I was working. That was in Cape Kennedy. It seemed that my ancestor was always pushing me, his name was Giordano Bruno, to go ahead 
and see what he foresaw. In the years 1500s, the late 1500s, and he paid with his life on the Campo de Fiori in Rome when he told the Catholic Church that, man, there were a multiplicity of universes. And that one day man would walk on the face of Luna. He seemed to have put me there to see that. These eyes are part of his eyes. And the stubbornness in me is part of his stubbornness. And it's not going to stop either. Yes, Martin Luther <laughs> King. I joined the Rainbow Coalition in Huntsville, Alabama. Oh, that wasn't fashionable at that time. <coughs> now we got a Rainbow Coalition now, too, with different people of different sexes. It's all a rainbow of humanity. Isn't that funny? And now the children are marching with their rainbow of life. And it's not going to be stopped. Yes, never stop marching. Never stop knocking at that door. It'll open on to forevermore. My ancestor on February 11th, 1600, was brought, brought before the Inquisitional Court. Prior to that, he spent eight years in the Castle San Angelo dungeon. Imagine eight years in a rat-infested dungeon, giving meager food. And he stood before 19 cardinals of the Inquisitional Court and said, you who pronounced this sentence upon me, do so with greater fear than I who receive it. Imagine the coyones on that man. <laughs> Women have them, they're called ovaries. <laughs> Don't let it fool you. We have them inside, they have them outside. So anyway, <laughs> the guys do. We all work together. So anyway, he sat, stood there before them, and there was a cardinal by the name of Roger Bellarmine that said, you change your mind about there are a multiplicity of universes and stars of each, each universe, and you change that mind, Giordano Bruno. He said, no. He was no taller than me. The statue makes him on the Campo de Fiori look about nine feet tall. But he's no taller than five feet four. I've now shrunk to five feet two. So anyway, what happened is that he said, no, I'm not changing my mind. That was February the 11th, 1600. Six days later, they put a metal spike in his mouth, stood him on the Campo de Fiori in the southwest corner, and burned him alive but he would not change his mind. He wasn't afraid of them. They feared him. That's why they put a spike in his mouth. Don't ever let them put a spike in your mouth and stop you from marching against tyranny. So, um, Giordano Bruno, so he was, he was your ancestor? Yes. Okay. Um, now, when that fellow from Brazil, Bruno Borges, ah. uh, created the statue of, of Giordano Bruno. His, in his uncle room. gave him the statue. Oh, really? An uncle or a cousin, so they gave him a five, six foot statue of Giordano Bruno. And he took all the pages of Bruno's work. And he wanted, you, have you ever seen the movie um, about, uh, there was uh, the man who played Superman uh, was in it, oh my God. And he wanted to go back in time to find oh, the woman. Somewhere in time. With somewhere in time. Thank you. Great. Yes, so. yes, yes. Bruno Borges wanted to do that. Go back in time. And he went ahead and he left his house. I never saw Bruno Borges leave this planet. I really did not. I kept seeing him in the woods, the wilderness somewhere. They found him in a cave, I believe he was. And they brought him home. I believe he's now home. Yeah. But he was so in love with my ancestor that he wanted to be just like him. And who knows? Maybe that little spark. But I think he went overboard with it. Yes, I feel my ancestor within me. And I feel that sometimes he gives me the courage to move forward. But I am not him. Part of me, the DNA of my skin is him, just like every one of you. From the beginning of time, have the DNA from your people that went before you. That we have that divine spark in us. I always say DNA, the dead are near always, DNA. Yes, they are, they're inside of us. And sometimes when we call our ancestors, please help us, 
we sometimes find an extra strength. Don't you feel that sometimes? Help us. They're there. Yes, we could be praying to different saints and everything, but what is more saintly than the bloodline you come from? You follow? Ask them for your help, the help, and they will turn a wheel for you and make it happen. But you have to have that genuine caring within you. So Bruno Borges wanted to be, he resembles my ancestor. If you look at him, he does resemble him. I believe if Bruno went ahead and just sat there and meditate, I think my ancestor could come to him. Yes, because he truly wanted to see him and be with him because he was looking for that belief and the caring and the bravery that my ancestor had. Okay, that's what I feel Bruno was looking for. Thank you. <laughs> I was so curious. You, uh, you, you mentioned, um, you have a really, you mentioned DNA, you have a really rich lineage. Where did it start for you? When did you, <laughs> when did you understand that, where you came from? Where, well, my I, think that, I think that's a question that, all, <laughs> it's like such an obvious question. Like, how did it all start for you? My DNA, we found type A positive blood, which is Middle Eastern. We're Sicilian, my family. We're tracing my line back now to 969 AD, which was a man. Stop it. I wrote this down. I have 969 right there. 969 AD. Leave it. <laughs> no, you're not. 969 AD. Joha el Sikulai el Rumi. You really wrote that down, Lance? <laughs> Lori didn't see your, uh, your book. She, she was looking at my book. Backstage, right? Yeah. <laughs> 969 AD. There was a man, the Fatiman Empire invaded into the Mediterranean, and they found this man who was Greek. And they took him back to Baghdad. So when he went to Baghdad, the, he was a very smart man. He, was, he knew astronomy. He knew Tacitician, the war of war. He knew how to deal with political things. And the caliph said to him, you're not a slave. He said, no, I don't want to be a slave. And no man should be a slave. The caliph looked at him. Where'd you get that idea? No, everybody should be free. <laughs> so he said, uh, sit down and talk to me. And he talked to him. He said, would you like to go back to Sicily? So he said, of course I would. Would you like to be a representative for me? He said, because I do things my way. I don't want to cut anybody's heads off, all this nonsense. <laughs> He might have gone back to Sicily, but he said, now I want you to become a general in my army. Okay. I want you to go into North Africa. And I want you to go to North Africa and conquer these little cities. On my terms, he said, yes, I'll do it. He said, so what, what are your terms? I want you to give my troops silver, gold, pay them so that they don't rape and pillage. Oh. He said, okay, he said, Joha, would you like to become part of the religion we believe in, Islam? He said, all right, there's nothing wrong with it. You believe in God, I believe in God. They call him different names, but he's still the same. So my ancestor converted to Islam. Well, he went to North Africa, and he gave the people food instead of arrows. They opened all the gates for him. You can look him up in history. It's, it's true. Every city he went into, they opened the gates. There was no raping. There was no murdering. And he told his troops, the first one I see you doing this, I'll show you. I will take your head. He ended up going to Egypt to a place called Heliopolis, place of the sun. They opened the gates. He named the city Cairo, which means 
conqueror because he saw Mars going over the horizon. There's a statue of my ancestor in Cairo, Egypt, Joha El Sikolai El Rumi. El Rumi meant he was Greek. So he then went back to Sicily. He stayed there. As far as I know, he outlived his life there. How I found this out was that I was looking at my grandmother's coat of arms. There's a crescent moon on it and the two stars, which I wear around my neck. I said, this is very strange. Then there was another coat of arms she had with two, two Morgan Davids on it. What's this all about? So there's Hebrew and there's Arabic. So what are we doing here? Yeah, what are we doing here? And this veins flowed everybody, Christian, Jew, Muslim. I'm a walking League of Nations, isn't that funny? <laughs> now my daughter married a man who comes from Sierra Leone, Africa. And guess what? We have a little black lady there who's going to grow up as strong as our grandmother. Of course, it was 25, 30 years ago I said to my daughter, you're going to have another one. Oh, I have my two children, Anthony and, and Erica. Erica is now 36, Anthony's 34, and Aaliyah is seven. She is now on the 15th or 16th of April going to the mosque in Boston and reading from the Koran. She speaks Arabic. She understands Italian, speaks it, and she's a League of Nations in that bloodline. So in that conglomeration of my family, along with Giordano Bruno, we're going to have some fun here. <laughs> I think, and we're going to make a new political party. You know what it's going to be called? The Broom Party. Yes. We sweep away all the caca. <laughs> and Washington is full of caca. <laughs> here we go. Oh, I got $130,000 for schnooping with Mr. Trump. Are you kidding me? Please. Sell your soul and now you sell your, excuse me, God. I don't mean that'll rhyme too, I'm a poet. <laughs> yes, sir, we're selling it, aren't we? <laughs> Business as usual. Did not expect a Stormy Daniels reference tonight. Oh, Stormy. <laughs> that's, that's I funny. think <laughs> lightning has struck the White I actually House. wrote it down. <laughs> now I'm going to make you laugh a little bit. On February 11th, when did the Pope abdicate? 2015, what year? Was it 2015 that the old Pope abdicated? He didn't die, he quit his job. That was, uh, what are they called? Pope, uh, Pope uh, Innocent, whatever his name was. Benedict. Benedict, Benedict. Ben he thought he was innocent. Benedict, uh, who was uh, Joseph Ratzinger, who was with the Nazi youth. He abdicated on the 11th of February. You know what happened that day? There was a lightning bolt that hit St. Peter's Basilica. That's the day, February 11th, 1600, my ancestor was condemned. Isn't it funny? <laughs> and there's a mark in the floor there now. <laughs> yes, I think sure that Lightning hit there. three times? Three times. I got, there are pictures. Go look at it. Basilica of St. Peter's hit by lightning, February 11th. Hello, Dolly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go to the I'm gonna go to the Vatican, you know. I wanna go. I'm surprised I'm surprised you haven't been. My knee's bad, that's oh. why yet. I gotta wait. <laughs> and my daughter's a travel agent, so she's gonna <laughs> send me there. Yes, Perfect. she is. Yeah. We'll we do have a so we'll do much. a live show from the Vatican. <laughs> <laughs> we'll do the shuffle, the Vatican <laughs> shuffle. We'll take the broom, sweep it out. <laughs> Everyone has a right to live. Religion doesn't replace science. The two of them can go hand in hand and make a stand. Why do men have a brain and women have a brain? So that they can make it move. Transgender, yes, everything. It's science 
The mind cannot be dissipated by superstition. Lori, you believe in magic, but, but magic, there's a science in that magic. You have an electromagnetic force field in you. Did you know that? Look at your hair. It stands on end and all that stuff. Oh, what's that doing? You're part of an electrical current. Every one of you. Uh, Franz Barden wrote a book, wrote many books, Initiation into Hermetics. It, it describes the electromagnetic force field in your body. Do you ever will for something, wish for something? Have you ever done that? And it comes out. And you surprise yourself. Well, today, I, my friend and I, we were driving. Rebecca was to take me here today. You were there. You see what happened. And I went ahead and I said, Rebecca said, I hope we get a parking spot. We will. I'll ask the great God, squat. Um, squat, um, squat. We need to find a parking spot. <laughs> I said, somebody's going to pull out. Watch, Rebecca, wait. The car pulled out. And we pulled in. <laughs> you will it so. At 11 years old, my mother took me to church. Major boo-boo. So anyway, I went there and, see, I was homeschooled in religion. Use your mind, your soul, your mind. Learn to be kind. Watch what happens. Anyway, go ahead. <laughs> Wonderful. And I'm sitting there with these long braids, not long black braids. And my mother braided them, put the little bows in it, and I had this little blue dress on with nice pink flowers in it. I looked like a nice, sweet little girl. And we went to St. Thomas Aquinas Church in Flatbush in Brooklyn, New York. Well, I lived in Brooklyn. So we walked in there, and my mother says, don't say nothing, Zito, she goes to me. Okay, Mama, I'm not going to say anything. She made a mistake by going into the pew first and me on the outside. Big boo-boo. So the priest starts to say, oh, Come into my house, O oh Lord, I am not worthy. Major mistake. Ma, why am I saying I'm not worthy? What did I do? Shut up. <laughs> oh, shut up. <laughs> my poor mother. <laughs> God rest her soul. So, goes ahead and says, O oh Lord, I am the one who says to sit right for me. Then he starts saying, Thy will be done. That really got me. So I said, Ma, I have a will. Shut up. Shut up. I pulled my hair. <laughs> so I broke away from my mother. And I went up to the priest and I said, Why are you lying to these people? You're saying I'm not worthy. If I was created in the image of God, then he's not worthy. He looked at me. That's heresy. I said, no, that was my ancestor. Excuse me, I said. Now you're saying, thy will be done. I have a will too because God gave me that will. So if I want to will something, it's going to happen because I walk with God too. Thank you, I'm out of here. <laughs> my mother took me home. How old were you? 11. And you did a mic drop in church? <laughs> I was bad. So I go home. Now this is Sunday. Italian family. They saw aunties are making the pasta and everybody's happy. My father made the best tomato sauce you ever want to hear. He was a damn good cook. My father was a darn good man and a magician and a half. So anyway, goes ahead. My mother said, what's the matter, Miguelina? What did she do? What didn't she do? So my aunt was there. She says, what did you do, Bella? I said, I told him he was lying to the people. So she said, sit down. <laughs> you want ice cream? Ice <laughs> is cream and it's ice cream in Italian translated. So I said, yeah, I'd like some. You can have it before you eat. She did the right thing. She's not cattle. But they could kill us. No more. No more. That was then. This is now. There's no more burning. The marching that you're seeing now is no more burning. Bring it forward, children. And the children, what did he say? Right. And the children shall lead him. 
Christianity became an ism. The isms killed people, not Christ. Christ loved humanity. Just as the Magi do, just as the practitioners of magic did. They didn't want to kill and murder and say it was Allah's will or God's will. And on the 11th, on the 11th of, what do you call it again, 20, 20, 2001, on February, and the 11th, that day, 9 11, I sat there on the edge of my bed and said, In the name of God, how odd, walk and don't, skull and bone, hate your sister and your brother. Oh, you forgot the great mother. There is another way. Learn all paths to stay. Learn to be kind. Your soul you'll unbind. Garden of Eden, that's what we're needing. Be part of the creation, not the uncreation. Be a caring nation. Allah, Buddha, Christ, great mother, want humanity to love one another. Not hate for religion or the color of the skin. Look into the heart. The soul is within. Create, not destroy. Make this world a place filled with joy. This is not art, it's a place of goddess and God. Conjoined together, we can make it a beautiful fair weather. This is the balance that's needed in this country. Women should never be used, men should never be used. They talk about men, women being abused by men. How about men being abused by women? It's there too. Am I correct? You better believe I'm correct. Make this world a caring nation, not part of the uncreation. If you do make the dream come true, follow the children. They'll tell you what to do. Children, you can never see heaven unless you see with the eyes of a child. You can never be a psychic unless you see with the eyes of a child. Because a child doesn't have those eyes blotted out by greed and avarice. You understand me? That's what's needed. Caring. Okay, well, let's talk about your psychic ability. It's a little bit, isn't it? <laughs> it's a <laughs> lot bit. My, my, my questions suck now. <laughs> so They don't suck. <laughs> Thank questions you. Thank you. Suck. Thank you. You want to eat a, no, a question? Go, they're, like that never. <laughs> they're lacking, Laurie. They're lacking a little bit. Um, so how did your ability show itself to you? Well, I was three years old. <laughs> my mother said, oh, put the light in in your room. So, Because you, my brother and sister, they had to have the light in their room. I was the youngest, and I was the mischief. That was my nickname, in fact, mischief. So anyway, I said to my mother, I don't want the light on. No light. But, you, you know, it, it helps you sleep better. No, no light. Because I can't see my friends. So my mother said, what friends? I have a lot of friends. They come at night. One lady comes to see me. She's got red hair and green eyes. And she's tall. She's a big lady, I said. Big lady, red hair, green eyes. And she calls me Carissima. My mother went in the other room and said, does this picture look like the lady you're seeing? Oh, that's her, that's her, that's her. That's your grandmother, Victoria. I never knew my grandmother. She died in 1929. I was born on my mother and father's 11th wedding anniversary, April 27, 1940. My grandmother also was a midwife in New York City. She was a fantastic woman, Tia Vittoria. She never lost a child, never. She knew painless childbirth too, with the pressure points in the body. She said no woman should ever suffer in childbirth. She went into a roundabout with a Catholic priest one day, and she said, if I pinch you hard enough, how do you like that? I wouldn't. I said, well, think about a woman giving birth. That's a pinch and a half. <laughs> so anyway, my grandmother was one beautiful human being. A month after my mother was born, 
She was out delivering babies in the east side of New York. She lived at 63 Bayard Street, New York City. And she was delivering babies. It was very cold. Her husband was home. His name was Michael. That was my grandfather. And he says, aren't you tired, Victoria? I know I got to go out and deliver the babies. That night it was very cold. It was in March. Because back then it was cold in the winters. And she heard in the alleyway. <coughs> she went in the alleyway there. She thought it was a cat. It was a baby in the garbage can. The umbilicus was still there. She took her cape off. She had a red cape because they knew the lady with the red cape would deliver babies. And she wrapped the baby up and brought it home to my grandfather. You talk about psychic ability. This is a tail and a half. She went ahead, brought the baby home. She said, Michael says, they didn't want the baby. He thought that people gave my mother, the grandmother, the baby. He says, no, 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 Michael. Get the box, open the stove, put it by the cotton batting in there, blankets. We got to keep the baby warm. Upstairs, there was a woman who was a wet nurse. That meant somebody who was nursing children. Went upstairs. Says, come down, come down. I, 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 I need your help. Victoria, where'd you get the baby? Never mind. The black baby was a black baby. The little baby was black. And so, okay, okay. She says, we're keeping it, Michael. So the next day, she goes and registers the births. It was at Bellevue Hospital, I believe. She went to register the births. Talk about, this is where it comes in when you trust, and you know there's a light at the end of the hallway. Trust me, it's there. She went ahead, she went in there to register the birth, and there's this doctor, he's crying. She said, Dr. Burke, why are you crying? Victoria, my wife can never have a baby. She's sterile. I deliver babies to all the poor, and my wife cannot have a baby. So she says, your wife likes Italian food? What are you asking me that for now? Just yes or no. My grandmother was, see or no? That was it. No in between. Goes over to my grandmother's house on Sunday. His wife is downtrodden. She says, can I hold Michalina? Which was my mother. She had been born a month before. My grandmother says, no. Why won't you let me? Because you're going to hold this one. Both she and Dr. Burke were a black couple. The baby was black. Do you understand? Talk about how God and goddess works in strange ways, don't they? My mother was a psychic. Her mother was a psychic, the whole family. Where does it come from? It's a line of crazy people now. <laughs> <laughs> Who know how to do good. Do good and forget, do evil and remember. That's always a saying. Fai bonus scorn the fai mala pensa. That's the translating nation of it. How do we know we're psychics? You let the light in all the time and never deal with negativity. Never use your gift to hurt people. I just had a case of that this week. I want to give you $500, Lori. My friend does because his mother has to pass into the other world. What are you talking about, fool? This is a big Hollywood person, you know. Oh, the big mazoos, you know. <laughs> I call them the star effers. Leave me alone. Don't you come near me, turkey. So anyway, I said, uh, okay, what's the name? The woman. Have a little fun now. So I checked all the hospitals. I said, she's not in any of these hospitals. Let me tell you a little story about this. Number one, I don't take blood money. Number two, I don't like where you're coming from. Number three, I think you better evaluate yourself before you talk to me again. I don't need your millions or whatever. Believe me, I've had a lot of wealthy people around me. Everything I own, I bought. I own my soul. They cannot buy it. While you become a psychic, you never let anybody own your soul. There were days when I never had my, I raised two children alone without any child support. Mr. Hollywood 
left and went to Hollywood, California. He's out there somewhere now. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> he has the audacity to tell, tell my daughter, I told somebody about your mother. Who are you? Go away, get a job. <laughs> I didn't need you then and I don't need you now. I got a most wonderful husband now. Vietnam vet, he's the best on God's earth. And he never went for his benefits. But I helped somebody who was a colonel in the army. You're talking about how things work for a psychic? I helped this man who was a colonel. His, his wife, they were going to get a divorce. I said, wait a minute. He was near suicide. I said, you can't do that. You're not allowed. What are you going to do? Jump out of a window? Who cares? She gets your insurance and you're, and you're this. It's a bad Don't. <laughs> anyway, they went back together again. I say my prayers my way, and that's the way it goes. Use a spell? Nah. Use a prayer. It works too. Spells are prayers. So anyway, it goes ahead. goes back. He said, how come your husband never got his benefits? I said, Louie cannot go sit in an office. He has this agoraphobia. He has, ep forget about it. He doesn't even like to go sit in a restaurant. He doesn't go to weddings. I go with myself, that's OK. I don't care. I'm a full service unit myself. So anyway, <laughs> goes ahead. Goes ahead, and he has a colonel. The colonel has a major. Come and sit on the doorstep of my house and takes all of Louis's papers down, and he got his benefits. When you do good, good comes back to you. Do evil, and evil will kick you in the butt. So I helped somebody. I didn't take money from him. I wanted to see his family together. That is what a psychic does. Oh, I got this one from that. I got this from that. Sooner or later, it catches up to you. And then you see them look like old shriveled up prunes. <laughs> <laughs> All their money, where did they get them? They stole from people. Forget it. The official this and the official that. I'm going to go, oh, I said a bad word. <laughs> I don't care. It's good. That means I found gold. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So I guess one of the most popular questions a skeptic will ask is, well, if, if, if he or she is really psychic, why don't they just win the lottery? No, I give people numbers and they've won the lottery. <laughs> oh, yeah. I've done that. Yeah. Many years ago, though, God helped me and I did win so many. <laughs> 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 it was very strange how that happened. Dan, can you, can you show the winning lottery numbers on the... <laughs> yeah, flash them real quick. Flash oh. them real quick. Oh, oh. man, the projector's oh, not the projector's working. the projector's broken. I like the number 6, 9, 18, 22, 27. Play that in the mass cash. 6, 9, 18, 22, 27. And then don't forget to sign up for the Crawl Space Patreon. <laughs> Thank you.